The taste thing too, I personally love these uh, character types, just the round uh, type of uh, minimalistic. Good. Yeah. You'll notice over here on the right hand side, I have his pieces all, all spread apart. So that's him um, not connected, not moving, <laughs> not anything else. But this is exactly what I need um, to actually use something like Spine to animate him uh, in a program like Spine. I need to uh, break out the different things. So you'd so, pull it apart first? Yeah, I pull it apart first. So like any of these, um, I can just uh, grab onto him and you know move his stuff around. You know, I've placed it all together. So um, I just put it in a way that I can pull in and uh, create different ones. So there's different ways to do this. I actually exported these individually. Um, I can export it as a sheet I want and cut it apart, um, but I need to uh, be able to have these separate so that I can animate them separately. So let's dive into uh, Spine now. Let's close this down and bring up Spine. And let's uh, maximize this so we have a lot of room here. So this is our working surface. Um, and the first thing we need to do is we need to uh, bring in the images. And so over on the right-hand side, you can see I have uh, an images folder. If I do, uh, let me pop over to the tree. So I'll be talking about it. Let me show you what that looks like, uh, one, because so we'll be talking about different stuff so you can see it. Um, you can see there's the skeleton itself, uh, there's the root bone, um, all the other bones will attach to the root bone. Um, you can see there's a draw order. So as I place stuff on here, I want some things in front of other things, and so I'm going to be messing with the draw order. Um, images, which is what we're going to go into now, is uh, the images that I'm going to be using in this animation, and I'll share with you why that's important, that it's just pointing to a folder. Uh, it's really cool. Um, skins, we will talk about um, in a little bit later, um, but you can see that's where it is. And then animations. Uh, animations is where the completed animations that are created are going to be. Um, I just wanted you to see the hierarchy, so when I'm clicking around in there, you can know what I'm talking about. Uh, so the first thing I need to do is uh, tell it where the images are. And so if I click on images, I can click down here on the bottom here. Does it matter what file type they are? Uh, JPEGs, PNGs, um, you want something that's obviously going to be transparent, so a PNG is uh, perfect for this type of stuff. Um, and so if I click on this Browse folder, I can point to um, where they're at. And actually I have to look again. Um, you can see I'm actually using the Cubby version of it. Um, sorry, let me just make this easy. and then select that folder. And now you can see they're all in here, uh, in, in the Spine uh, program itself. And the cool thing about this is that since it's pointing to a folder, if I wanted to change these, if I didn't like the image uh, as is, um, I would be able to uh, change the image. It'd still be pointing to this folder. So everything I build in Spine, the animations that I use in Spine, aren't going to be changed from it. Um, obviously you can tell I come from Chicago and I'm a Chicago Cubs fan. Um, so I, I made this little cubby guy here. Um, the first thing I want to do is get a uh, full image guy here, and I'll show you why I do that. I'm just going to drag him on there, and I'm going to make this a little smaller here so he's not overtaking stuff. Actually, there's a couple different things you can do when you're working with images in here. You can see there's a rotate. A translate and scale. Rotate was what I accidentally was doing at first um, when I was spinning him on this axis. Uh, the translate is just moving him um, on the X or the Y. And I just want to make sure he goes about there over the root bone. Uh, and then um, this guy right here is kind of just like a template. Um, I want to, when I bring the other pieces on here, I want to know where to place them. Now this guy isn't all that complex. I could probably um, place the other images without having this guy in here, but when you have a more complex uh, character like Dave, like some of the other things I'm going to show you, you want a template here. So I'm going to uh, go ahead and mark him down in the right hand here as a background so he won't be included in exports. Um, when I'm exporting this, I don't want this image. And then I'm going to color him a little differently and make, his trans make him a little bit transparent. So that when I'm working in here, I know that that's my template guy that I'm working with. 
Now what we can do, and this tool has a bunch of different ways that you can accomplish the same thing, and it's really whatever you're comfortable with when you're working in it. Um, but I want to draw uh, bones on him. And so I can click over here to create a bone. Um, you have to know what bone to start with, and it's starting with the hip bone, uh, which is uh, already there, the root bone that you see up here. And so that's already highlighted. And I want to create uh, a hip bone. And so I'm just going to actually click right there. Let's move it up so we can see a little bit more. Should you always start with the hip bone? Um, honestly, it depends on the character. I'll show you like a dragon and stuff okay. later that doesn't have hips per se. Yeah. So it, it all depends on what you're trying to animate. Um, and you want to connect bones. The whole point of this is being able to uh, move uh, an arm and have the uh, lower arm and hand move as well. Um, so I'm going to uh, make sure that's selected. And then I'll do a bone for the body. Uh, make sure the body bone is selected and still is. And I want a bone for the upper arm. I want a bone for the lower arm and hand. I want to click here again um, to make sure that body bone is connected. And I'm going to do one for this side. And then do one here. And the interesting thing is you'll notice even in my uh, character that has no arms, yeah. I can still make his hands move, and as you see when I when I move him in a second, move in a way that would be consistent with him having arms. Um, his feet, I actually don't want to have, I'm going to put bones, but I'm just going to put little uh, dots, so um, I think I need to click here and then put a bone here. Click and here these again. won't, those lines won't show up later, right? Yeah, because because I don't have legs and he's too close, and and the shoes again, I'm, I chose a very simplistic one to do this quickly. I want the shoes to just move up and down. It's not going to have real leg motion. Right. Um, and the last thing I need is is the head. And again, um, now I have my my bones all set in place. So now we want to actually place the images. And so if I click on head, um, I can do a, uh, either click set parent bone here, or I can hit P on my keyboard, and click on where I want it to go. Click OK. And you'll see that it doesn't place it exactly, so that's where the template comes in. I want to move it to where it needs to go. Um, if I could click on uh, left foot, we will do uh, P. And I'll try and do this quickly. And right foot, or left hand is the next so one. So you place each of the different parts on top of the template then? Correct. I'm connecting uh, the images to the bones is what I'm actually doing. OK. And then I place them over the template just because that's where I want them to physically be connected to the bone. Uh, let's do the rest of these quickly. Uh, left shoulder, set the parent bone. Right there. I don't know what happened. Let's do it again. Set parent. And I'm going to hide bones right now so that keeps quits jumping on me. So I just clicked up here because I didn't want to uh, see the bones because the tree kept jumping on me. So I'll do uh, right foot. Click on that bone. We're almost done here. Right hand. Right shoulder. And then body. Now I need to do some adjustments here. them in the right place. And so um, you can see he's all set, but we haven't, you haven't even seen the bones move yet. And so uh, you notice there's a couple things that, that are wrong. Um, this this uh, should be behind the head. Um, and you can set that in draw order. So we open up draw order. You can see, I think I want uh, right foot up on top. I'm oh, sorry. Right foot up on top. And then I want right hand. And then I want right shoulder. 
and then I want head and body. And I think everything else will be fine. So now you can see that they're in front of and behind uh, this character. Now if I want to actually move and place them, here's where the cool part comes up. You'll notice that I can uh, click on this and do rotate. And so now his whole body rotates, right? Because um, all those bones are connected. Yeah. Um, if I do the same thing for his, move each part now. his arm, the whole thing's connected, right? So I can very easily put him in the poses I want. As a matter of fact, if I do two bones, if I do control and control on his shoulder, it actually moves in a way they both move, right? So it's a more realistic yeah. movement. Um, and again, I can, I can do this. These are uh, just going to be separately moved uh, back and forth, so we don't need to do it on that. So this is setting them up. Again, a very simplistic uh, character, very simplistic bone structure. Um, but this is the setup part of it. So you'll take your time, you'll set up all the bones, um, you'll create your structure. And then you want to animate. Um, so animation is done uh, by clicking, I probably should show that, right up here in the left-hand corner. It says Setup or Animate, uh, and it flips back and forth between the two. And uh, we're going to open up this dope sheet, and we're going to make him a bit smaller so you can see what's going on here. And I'm going to do this quickly because you'll get it very quickly. Um, I actually want to uh, do keyframes. So what I just did there is I grabbed all of the bones uh, and then I want to set a keyframe. So what this is down here is this is um, where I change the bones or change the positions of the bones and move between them. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to copy this one. Just uh, click right here and hit Control C. And I'm going to do a very rough one for you guys. Then I want to, on the timeline, I'm going to jump to five here. And I'll just start moving him, right? So again, I can, I'm, all I'm going to be, I can move them around. I'm going to rotate most of them. So I'm going to rotate that, rotate that. We will uh, move this one, move this one. And then I just grab them all again and click these keys so it's on the timeline. I'll move it again to 10, and then I'll do the same thing. Um, actually, let's, let's choose the, I want to get the template out of there. Uh, we'll do that later. Um, you can see the templates behind that. I can actually hide that, but we'll do that later. So I want to go to 10, and I want to move it a little bit more. And we'll rotate it, and we'll rotate it, and then we'll move his shoe again. And I'm not going to finish this for you because this could get a little tedious, but much less tedious than taking a character and moving him in something like Inkscape and changing him, um, rearranging him. Uh, the bone structure in here allows you to do stuff so incredibly fast. And the other thing it allows you to do is if you have a uh, an artist may be doing your renderings when you have to wait on them to do stuff to tweak it just a little they have to retweak the whole thing so I'm gonna grab this pose by highlighting all the bones keying it and what you'll see here if I run this I would have to do much much more to make it a little smoother but um, it does two things and it might not be super apparent for you is it not only goes from frame to frame, but uh, it interoperates. What that means is you'll notice that in between the frame I'm at, see these little slight variations? I didn't have to set those slight, slight variations. Oh, it, it fills it in for it you. It fills it in for me. Now, again, I did this really quickly and very sloppily, um, but I would spend a little bit more time. And it even, see from here, it goes back to its beginning thing for me. So it's a really easy uh, tool. Let me show you a different one. Um, let's start with uh, goblins. The goblins is a good one. So save and continue, test, just in case we want to go back to it. 
And so uh, here's a, a goblin. Uh, and this is actually one of the samples. Um, you can see, again, he's, uh, we're in setup mode, but everything's uh, connected. So he has this whole uh, arm area here. I can rotate it, move him around, uh, and he's, he's completely connected. And if I go to animation for him, there's a couple things I want to show you that are really uh, awesome. So I'm going to go ahead and do run. And you can see, you know, right out of the box, it's a much better uh, animation. They actually oh, spent really time, smooth. yeah, they spent time doing it smooth. But here's the killer. So you'll notice that um, there's a skins folder. And what that means is I can have one animation that works for more than one person. So if I have a goblin girl, sorry, I got to hit this. If I have a goblin girl, I can use the same animation oh. for the goblin girl. So any similar figures, you can use them again and again and again. You'll also notice, uh, very simply in this animation, I can swap out a piece. So if you want the eyes to blink, um, I can swap out the spear if I want them to carry a torch, or it makes changing the animation uh, very, very simple. Also, if I go back to uh, this and set up, say for whatever reason I wanted him uh, or, her, or her 